Hello, star people. You're watching Earth Sky, and I'm Deborah Bird speaking with you live on June 2nd, 2025. I'll give you some tips on which planets you can see this month. And if you are watching live and you have questions, please write them in the comments of whatever platform you're on, and we'll try to answer. So first, here's a meme that we grabbed off Facebook last week. Are we going to see these planets together in early June? Notice the date here, June 3rd. That's tomorrow. I'm going to be talking more about this chart in just a minute. Is it true or not true? But first, I want to tell you now about something really easy that you can enjoy watching tonight or any night this month. It's the red planet Mars near a bright star called Regulus, heart of the lion and the constellation Leo. This chart shows the evening sky and notice that big W that means west. You can look west in the sunset direction from anywhere in the world this month and see Mars. In fact, Mars is the only planet you can see easily in the evening now. For all of us, when night falls, it's pretty high up in the west, located along the same line that the sun travels in daytime, represented by the green line across this chart. We pass between Mars and the sun in January, and we're racing ahead of it in orbit now, so Mars isn't as bright as it was a few months ago but it's still very easy to spot and noticeably red in color. Okay, so this chart is early June, but if you keep watching, you'll see Mars and Regulus getting closer and they're going to look really cool. This chart shows June 16th when they'll be closest, red Mars and blue white Regulus, but don't take my word for it. Let's look back to last week when I was speaking with Bob King, a.k.a. Astro Bob of Duluth, Minnesota. Further up, though, much easier to see, you notice there's Mars. And it is not terribly bright like it was earlier this year, but it's quite easy to see. And it's not too far from, if you look on the diagram to the left, there's a star about the same size dot as Mars. That's Regulus. It's the brightest star in the constellation of Leo. The two of them are about one fist apart if you raise your fist up to the sky, but Mars is slowly moving eastward to the left. And on June 16th, you gotta mark this date, this should be really cool. On the 16th, Mars will just sit right above Regulus. They'll be only about one moon diameter apart. So you go out and you'll see what looks like, almost like a double star of Regulus and Mars. And you can tell them apart just by the color. Uh, Regulus is white, and Mars will have that uh, classic kind of fiery red-orange color. Okay, so that was Bob King, like me. He's another OG stargazer, and he's excited about this Mars regular alignment. It'll be so easy to see. And as I said, Mars is the only planet you can see easily in the evening but it isn't the only planet in the evening sky. If you can get outside early enough in the evening, you might catch our solar system's giant planet, Jupiter, in bright evening twilight. You might catch it tonight, June 2nd, or tomorrow night, but you need to be outside right after sunset, looking west, the sunset direction. Jupiter is big and bright. It's brighter than Mars, but it's in bright twilight now, and binoculars might help. Jupiter is about to disappear into the sunset glare. It's about to pass behind the sun from us. It'll be most directly behind the sun on June 24th. But even Mars and Jupiter aren't the only evening planets in June either. Little Mercury, the sun's innermost planet, was in our morning sky last month, and it passed behind the sun from Earth on May 30th. Here's a sun-observing spacecraft view of Mercury. The big round thing in the middle is an occulting disk. It's meant to blot out as much as possible of the sun's glare. The sun is behind that disk, 
And the bright thing that's moving there, that's Mercury going behind the sun. So Mercury has now officially passed into the evening sky, but we can't see it yet because it's still too near the sunset glare. In fact, Mercury is mostly above our horizon in daylight in early June. It's traveling across the sky with the sun during the day. But Mercury will return to our evening sky and be visible in the west after sunset below Mars starting around mid-June. And that brings us back to this image. Again, notice the date, June 3rd. And notice the first three planets here, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter. We just talked about all three of those. So can we see these planets together on June 3rd or any time in June 2025? Absolutely not. We're always so surprised to see this kind of misinformation about the night sky. For real night sky information, subscribe to our videos or come to earthsky.org. But what about the three planets pictured here that we didn't talk about yet? Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn? And let's just get Uranus and Neptune out of the way. This is a reprocessed image from the Voyager 2 spacecraft, which passed behind these planets in the late 1980s. And yes, it's theoretically possible to see Uranus using just your eyes. I guess I've looked for it and seen it maybe twice, maybe three times. That's with the eye alone in 50 years of stargazing. You need a really dark sky to see Uranus with the eye. And even then, the main reason people don't look for it is that it looks like a greenish dot. And as for Neptune, you need a telescope to see it at all. So if anyone ever tells you that Uranus and Neptune will be part of a spectacular planet parade, don't believe them. You probably won't see them. But what about the final planet on that June 3rd meme, Saturn? No, of course it's not going to look like that. Saturn isn't a huge disk in our sky. It's just a golden colored dot, like a pretty bright star. Uh, plus it's in the morning sky now. And that bogus June 3rd meme didn't mention Venus at all, even though Venus is the brightest planet and easily visible from around the world in the east before dawn now, near Saturn and near the sunrise point. So of all the planets you can see in June 2025 or ever, the brightest one is Venus. You can't mistake it for anything else. It's blazing away in the morning now in the east before sunrise. And here's what's always true uh, about that word alignment in astronomy. The visible planets are always in a line across the sky. They always follow the same path that the sun travels during the day. And that's because our whole solar system is flat. It's flat because billions of years ago, in place of the planets, there was a cloud of dust and gas spinning in space. And as it spun, it flattened out. So our sun formed in the center of that cloud and the planets in our solar system formed in that flat disk part. And even today, the planets are still orbiting in that disk. And by the way, I didn't mention the full moon of June, sometimes called the strawberry moon, but I'll be back live on Friday, June 6th to talk about it. For today, that's our show. Thank you for watching. And please help us out. Subscribe, like, and share. We'll be back tomorrow talking with an expert about a magnetic pole shift that happened around the same time Neanderthals became extinct, while our human ancestors might have used sunscreen, clothing, and caves to survive. We hope to see you then. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.